There are only a few legends in Apex who can actually be considered a true hybrid legend who can kind of just do it all, and Bangalore is one of them. But there's probably no other legend in the entire game who can be as detrimental to your team than this Cold Steel Warlord. Playing her wrong or poorly can really just mess everything up, so let's help you not do that. The playmaking ability, the passive of double time, is actually one of the best passives in Apex, and it's an ability that probably does not get enough praise. For a short amount of time, two seconds, Bangalore gets a 30% speed boost when gunfire or grenades are barely missing her while she is sprinting. This gives Bangalore a lot of aggressive power to push in and out of areas with that extra natural speed while she is under fire. Obviously, there is no real way to activate the passive on your own. It kind of comes down to enemies missing shots and, in general, trying to put fire down on you. One great way you will often get this passive to activate though is when you are rotating around. Rotating around and specifically in more open areas will let you be prone to getting shot more and this 30% speed boost is a massive way to just get you across those larger gaps without getting hit. Knowing that you have this extra speed boost is the trick to utilizing Bangalore's double time, pushing enemies and knowing that you're going to get that extra little kick means you slightly have more leeway when it does come to pushing enemies, which is quite powerful. This mainly, again, is because you are harder to hit when the passive is on, and a lot of the times, players are just not used to tracking someone with 30% more speed. This also works where you can push in, get a knock, get some big damage, and then you get that speed boost activation to quickly get out of trouble or around a corner faster than any other legend in the game. This passive ability also works very well with Bangalore's tactical, that smoke launcher. Before we do get to this, though, you gotta check out my pinned comment down below, as you probably know, legends rarely go through major changes, and Bangalore is a perfect example of this, as she has more or less been the same for a very long time. If something does change, I will let you know down there, and I'll also let you know how she is performing in today's meta. This smoke launcher is just another pillar of what gives Bangalore a really great sense of hybrid play. The smokes can be used for a ton of different things, but the smokes have a 33 second timer. You can store up the two charges and the smoke is active on the ground for about 23 seconds. The first technique and actually my least favorite technique is smoking oneself. There's a few reasons why smoking yourself can be good, but to start, you generally don't want to do this. Dropping a smoke at your feet or around you does of course give you cover, but it's also blinding all of your vision to what's around. Basically, this means enemies can push up to you or reposition really without you having any idea as you are blind to your surroundings. Another warning with Bangalore smokes and we highlighted this at the intro, the smokes can be really detrimental to your team so you have to be very aware of what the smoke is not only doing for you but also for your team. While you may be very weak and smoking yourself as needed, it might blind your squad and give them no visuals when they are very capable of fighting because they might still be healthy. There's honestly nothing more frustrating than when you are trying to play with a random Bangalore who just has a very poor sense of smoke timing and is constantly getting your entire team into trouble. Basically, don't be that bang. All that to the side, a great reason to self-smoke at your feet is when you are trying to quickly loot up a death box that may be in a position where there is no cover. Additionally, dropping smoke on a knock teammate who has no cover or even when you need to revive a player that is down is a really great time to do so. Of course, this also works when you may want to try and respawn someone at the beacon too. And really, the last reason why you would want to smoke at your feet could be when you are already running directly away from an enemy. This kind of makes a line between them, your smoke, and then you who is already out of your smoke running away, trying to get cover or heal up. This kind of rolls us into the second technique of smoking, and this is to smoke in between yourself, your squad, and other enemies. Smoking in between allows for some creative playmaking where you you can use certain angles or other terrain to your advantage. This technique gives you a lot of great play options, as this way enemies can't just walk out of your smoke and then basically it's doing nothing. By putting the smoke between you and the enemy, you're really just allowing your awareness to take over to make plays. Additionally to this, smoking in the middle of longer hallways or rooms will allow you to have some visuals and let you see if enemies are trying to take that bait to run through your smoke while you are waiting on the other side to beam them. And if you are making an aggressive play up a zip line that has enemies around, sometimes smoking at the end or the start of zipline can be a really great tool to give yourself some cover while you ride that zipline. The third way to utilize smokes is my preferred method and this is using the smoke on enemies. Using the smoke directly on enemies has a ton of advantages but for starters it blinds their vision not yours and still more or less gives you the same effect. Obviously if there are multiple teams around this doesn't really apply but blinding someone else is generally the way to go. The second advantage to this is that you can completely relocate by either getting an alternate angle or pushing up so you can breach a gap and push a fight 
to that enemy. Another great way to utilize this type of smoke is by smoking enemies that are exiting the ring. Whenever you smoke near that sweet orange glow of the ring, it makes enemies in the smoke very transparent as it kind of silhouettes them. This basically means that everyone on your team looking at the enemies near the ring has a digital threat. This is also a warning to not smoke yourself when you are near a ring because you will be semi-revealed to enemies. It's worth taking a second to say that digital threat optics for Bangalore are literal wall hacks. By far, these are one of the best items to give to a Bangalore. And if you are running with a bang, you should be on the lookout for these tees so everyone can use that smoke. A few more tips for the smokes that you are going to want to know. If you properly space the smokes apart, meaning not spamming two at the same time, you can have nearly continuous smoke coverage. So if you can, don't spam two at once. Additionally, when you are in a smoke or fighting around smoke, and if you are a controller player, aim assist gets really wonky and most of the time you aren't going to have it. So you've been warned, be mindful of fighting around smokes. Another generic tip that you can utilize is to pop a smoke whenever you do need to rip a Valkyrie ultimate or if a teammate does need to ping those beacons. And while I haven't explicitly said it yet, you can use your smoke to support your teammates who may need to cross open areas or are in need of help such as looting death boxes. While it is not much, smokes will deal 10 damage to enemies. This is enough to be super annoying and make enemies oftentimes feel like they need to use shield cells, which will slow them down. This is just another advantage of sending smokes right onto enemies. Before we get to the tips for the Rolling Thunder, a huge shout out to Glitch Energy, the sponsor of today's video. Glitch gives you the power, strength, energy, and focus with no jitters to keep your game and yourself on point. Glitch has been my daily driver for literally months at this point. Be sure to grab the After Dark Star Kit so you can get a few flavors to try out with a glow in the dark shaker. You gotta use code TEMPROVISION for 25% off all of your orders. Again, big thanks to them for sponsoring the content that we do around here. The Rolling Thunder Ultimate Ability. Probably not the greatest ultimate in Apex, at least objectively speaking, but it still has a lot of viability depending on certain circumstances, such as positioning, timing, and your general playstyle. As we stated earlier, Bangalore is a true hybrid legend, and this continues to be the case with that Rolling Thunder Ultimate Ability. When using, Bangalore throws a flare on the ground, and missiles start to land in a zigzag formation, starting from the flare and going forward 70 meters. Six seconds later, the missiles will start to blow up, starting from the first to land, and going all the way out to the end. The rockets will do 40 damage per rocket hit and will also stun enemies. They also leave a slight smoke effect allowing for a brief moment of cover. The big tip with this is that the missiles will start from where the flare hits the ground. So you can throw the flare a little bit further to start that rocket pattern a little bit more distance away from Bangalore or you can drop it right at her to start a little bit closer to herself. And every single time, the rockets will also come down and go forward in the direction she is facing. The three minute timer is the worst out of the ultimates in Apex but it also is not the best, so I would suggest using this ability when it really matters. The first technique and way to use the creeping barrage is in an aggressive fashion. Similarly to the smoke, if enemies are forward of your position, dropping the ultimate down and then following those rockets as they explode is an insane way to breach some gaps, even more so if you can get your passive to activate for that additional speed. This gives you a lot of playmaking potential, where if the rocket does connect, enemies are going to be hurt, they're going to be stunned, and on top of that, you're at minimum going to be more than likely able to force them to move, so you can't get some movement into their position. This means the ult is really great for just forcing movement if you need to get to an enemy's location. You can take this and the opposite way of using the rockets defensively to make some nice plays as well. If enemies are stuck up against the ring or in a tough spot, you can't drop the rockets down to force them to move or just take that ultimate damage. This means you either can push them after they get hit by those rockets or you can watch them scatter and beam them as those rockets are going off. One defensive way that you can use this ultimate is to drop the ultimate at her feet while you are running away. You could do this by by either looking forward and throwing it or just turning around if enemies are a little bit further behind you and throwing the ultimate towards them. If you are pushing ahead, the rockets will land as you are running with them and they will end up covering your back as you'll be able to run out of range before those rockets begin to explode. This should more than likely give you an advantage by creating some separation and allow you to reset, heal, or just get away. This ultimate actually covers a good amount of space so waiting to use it around the end game can be very good, especially if it's an open air end game and there are no buildings around. I suggest trying to time this approach Appropriately, so you can at least have one ultimate to use at the end of your matches or of course you can cop some ultimate accelerants. You can also combo Bangalore's abilities together by smoking enemies and then throwing that ultimate down. If enemy sight lines or just general vision is covered, it's a lot harder for them to understand and figure out where the best way is to escape from those rockets and it will just increase the chaos and opportunities for you. Additionally with this, the creeping barrage is a pretty great tool just to use as a team or squad management ability. What I mean by this is if you do have a few squads around you looking to push you or maybe third party you, dropping the ultimate down in the direction of one team and then you push another squad is a 
great way to make some separation in taking a straight three on three fight rather than getting third partied right after you do take that fight. This won't give you the most amount of time, so you gotta be efficient with your playmaking and be very communicative to your squad as to what you wanna do. We have a few more tips to go over, but truly you gotta be very creative with Bangler's kit of abilities if you wanna get the most out of her. Always try to think outside of the box when it does come to her tactical smokes and that ultimate ability. Extra things to know. For one, Bangler thrives with Seer and Bloodhound. At this point, if you've been playing Apex for a while, you probably know that scanning is a huge deal. And being able to throw smokes down and then have your teammates reveal them with those scans, it's a pretty huge deal. It's basically wall hacks whenever you wish. Bangler will also pretty much be a big help to any non-movement legend, so don't be afraid to smoke your more immobile teammates if they do need to cross some open areas. Both the gold helmet and gold backpack are also a pretty superb item to give to a Bangler. This helmet is going to help you keep those smokes up and that three minute ultimate timer will be reduced by quite a bit. I do think Caustic, Gibraltar, Lifeline, Mirage, and Newcastle are still at minimum better to get the bag though, so I would give it to those legends if you do have one in your squad. Ranking Bangalore and being successful third really just comes down to having the right mindset. It's a very important thing to have. She's a pretty offensive legend, so being aggressive is good. Weaving in and out teams, using her smoke as cover, helps her stay very mobile and even more so with the assist of her passive speed boost, but she is not invincible. And from the time you pop a smoke to the time you run away, you are still open to attack, so you cannot overextend things and be very mindful of your surroundings. It also still takes a second for that smoke to pop out and activate before you can get some cover. It's okay to be more methodical and support your team with her smokes and that ultimate usage. Remember, she is a hybrid legend. But how does she rank with the competition though? It's a tough world out there, I'm not gonna lie. Nearly every squad has some sort of scanning ability. Seer and Bloodhound are two massive pain points for her and fighting these legends, it's gonna happen more times than not. Especially Seer, he's nuts right now. Not to mention there are other legends like Fuse and Mad Maggie who both have little scanning abilities. Because of this, Bangler is just not a top tier legend. But that being said, she's definitely not a bottom tier as well. She's squ in the middle for me around a top 10 to top 12 legend in apex none of this really matters though if you cannot excel in your matches so check out this 101 tip video to give yourself the tools and tricks to master all of apex happy gaming legends